Band Helper is a great tool to organize your rehearsals, and one way to do that is to prepare in advance a list of songs you need to work on. But you don't have to manually create and edit a set list to manage this. Instead, you can create a smart list. We'll call this one Rehearsal. And add a search filter. We'll select the color orange. We'll also set this as a favorite so it always appears on the main menu. Then we can go through the song list and set songs we need to practice to orange. And when we view this smart list, there they are. And once we've worked a song enough that we no longer need it here, we can just edit the song to remove the color, and it drops off the list. If you're already using colors for other things, you could use a tag or a custom field instead to populate your rehearsal smart list. Band Helper is designed to stay in the set list view during a performance, but that doesn't mean you need to stay in the same set list. Let's say I created a specific set list for my next performance, but I also have a set list of backup songs that I like to keep handy. From the list of set lists, I'll click this triangle icon for my backup songs list. If I had a basic account, I'd have to go to the set list details page to turn that on. Now I'll view my performance set list, but if I need to jump over to the backup songs, I can just click the set list title and select that, and then view some songs as needed, and then I can jump back again. You probably know that you can control many of Bandhelper's functions with a foot switch or other remote control device, and you might also know that you can control some functions with a screen gesture like a swipe or a two-fingered tap. But did you know you can trigger multiple functions with the same button or gesture? From the remote control settings, you can simply assign the same trigger to multiple actions. You can also do this from the layout settings. So here I'm assigning start stop auto scroll and start stop recording to a three fingered tap. Et voila! <laughs> This one's for the guitarists. You want to use a capo, but the chords entered for a song show the real chord names, not the chord shapes you'll be playing. You could manually transpose down every time you view the song. But it's easier to edit the song and set the personal transpose setting. In this case, I'll go down three half steps so I can place my capo on the third fret. Now when I view the song, it automatically transposes the chords for me. But note the real key is still displayed down in the bottom toolbar. Since this setting is personal, it doesn't affect the chords display for anyone else. It's just my little secret. A tablet on stage is a great way to streamline your setup and save paper, but sometimes you still want a hard copy of your songs, either as a backup or to share with a player who isn't in your account. It's easy to generate this from any of your set lists. Just go to your list of set lists, select one, and click Share Songs. The preview on the right shows how your songs will print as you adjust the settings on the left. I'll select a few useful fields. Add page numbers, in case the whole thing gets dropped on the floor. And click the Print button. If you're like me, you're always a little short on time when packing up for a gig, so it's nice to have quick access to driving directions. In a basic account, you can add the gig address on the setlist details page, and in a Plus or Pro account, 
you can set up a contact and attach that to an event. That's even better because you can reuse the contact info for future gigs at the same venue. Then when you're ready to leave, just open the app on your phone, and the next event should appear on the main menu, along with the navigation button. Click that and you're on your way. Booking gigs involves several steps, usually spread out over time. Bandhelper can keep you on target with all those tasks. Let's say you sent an inquiry to a booker, and you want to follow up in a week. From the Booker's Contact page, you can click Add an Action, Set a Date, Enter the Task, and select Send Reminder. Then the action will appear in your main menu shortcuts, and you'll get a reminder by text, email, or in-app notification on the due date. You could also use this to schedule promo tasks like sending flyers, making a social media post, or sending to your mailing list. If you're entering all your performance dates into Bandhelper, there's no need to enter them again onto your website. Assuming you can customize your website code, you can go to the Website Widgets page on the Bandhelper website, copy the calendar widget code, and add it to a page on your own site. Then events you add to Bandhelper, when they are confirmed and marked as public, will appear there automatically. You can even add custom fields and mark them as public to show additional info, like the field I added here to show the price and age restrictions. There's a lot to remember when you're playing gigs, and I'm saying this as a person who once brought my whole PA system except the mixer. In Bandhelper, you can build detailed, multi-level checklists to make sure you don't forget anything. Here's a checklist for gigs where I have to bring the PA, and a different version for gigs where the sound is provided. As you're packing, you can check off the items, and you can easily clear the checklist to use it again. You could also make one-time checklists for special projects, like an album release or a video shoot. After all these features to support the business side of your band, let's bring it back to the music and your personal practice time. If you need some extra motivation, or just like to geek out on the numbers, you can log and display your practice time in Bandhelper. First, set some practice goals, specific things you plan to work on, like your vocal range or your guitar scales. Then whenever you finish a practice session, you can go to the sessions list, add a new session, and enter the minutes spent on each goal. Then you can go to the practice totals and see your results over time. 